So I don't hate this move at all to use a late third round pick on a guy who could at the very least be a solid backup quarterback. But enough about the decision, let's get into who Will Greer is as a quarterback. Let's start things off with this play. It is going to be man coverage as it's a cover one blitz on this one. And those are going to be the routes that West Virginia's players are going to be running. And so basically the idea behind this is that the receiver and tight end who are on the top half of the screen will cut over to the middle of the screen. And because of this, this now means that it'll clear out the top half of the screen. And since their halfback is going to run out in that direction, then in theory he just has a one man to beat and that would be a linebacker. So then, of course, if all you have to have happen is you're running back to outrun a linebacker, it can be a very good situation, and so West Virginia is going to feel relatively confident on this play. And so once this play develops, already it's already working out. You know, the running back is open, and it's guaranteed to get some yards here. It might not go for a first down, or it might go for a first down. It'll be kind of close, but either way, this is guaranteed you're going to pick up some yards, and on a first down and 10, that's all you want to do. So the rest of this play has worked. Now Will Greer has to do his part and make sure he makes a good throw. Ideally, you would want to get this ball right there, essentially, in relative to your side man. Obviously, it'll be a bit further up the field so you can hit him in stride, but when you do hit him in stride, that's where you'd want the ball to be. That way, your halfback can make the catch while running forward and continue to run forward and potentially pick up that first down and pick up as many yards as possible. However, as you see here, Greer's throw is just a bit behind and it's not able to be complete on that one. Now, granted, in my opinion, that one still should have been a catch that falls on the halfback more than anybody. However, Greer didn't really do him a lot of favors. When all your momentum is going in one direction and then throws to your back shoulder, that's Granted, sometimes you have to make more difficult catches, and that one wasn't a terrible throw by any means. But that is a bit of a problem I'll have with Greer, is sometimes he will lack just a little bit of accuracy on some of these throws. He's not crazy inaccurate, but he will miss these throws from time to time. It's something that may go unnoticed when you just watch a few plays, however, when you watch enough of them, you can definitely start to notice that he'll just he'll miss these throws just by a little bit. Like this one's another example. It's going to be a cover one hole, and they're going to have basically a pick play going on right here, where the number two receiver on the top half of the screen is going to run out to try to get in somebody's way, and then they'll send a tight end up to the top half of the screen and hopefully he'll get open. That's the way this play is designed to work. And this play is actually once again going to be worked out perfectly. Everything's going to be executed well and the throw is just a bit too far and the tight end isn't able to make that catch. Now granted, that tight end absolutely has to make that catch. You can't be dropping those catches. If you can get your hands on it, you have to be able to catch it. That has to be the mindset. If you're going to be winning football games, you have to make some tough catches from time to time. The tight end did not there. Now you might argue, well hey, in the NFL, he'll have NFL level tight ends and they'll be able to make those catches, right? So who really cares? But my point is, he's making things more difficult on his players. I mean, even if that tight end did make that catch, he would have no opportunity to get some yards after the catch because he wouldn't be able to run further because he'd have to dive to make the catch. Same thing with his halfback on that first play. The half would have had to adjust his body weight and wouldn't have been able to catch the ball in stride and pick up as many yards as he wanted to because the throw was just a bit inaccurate. And while yes, the NFL does have more talented players on your team, it also has more talented players working against you. So all your players will be able to make some more tough catches, also all the windows won't be as big. So that is one of the problems that I do have with Greer, however there's a lot of things that I do like about Greer as well. Like take a look at this one, essentially the way it's going to work is that it's going to be play action to the top half of the screen, and then what West Virginia is going to do is have those two receivers right over there both run out the block to Kansas players. Then they'll send their tight end right over there as it's going to be basically just a screen pass to him and they'll see how many yards they can pick up. So pretty simple and often quarterbacks don't have too much to do on plays like this. Usually it's a pretty simple play for a quarterback to make. However, things are going to get a little bit more complicated when this play develops. Largely because of that Kansas player right there doing a great job of winning his one-on-one -on -one matchup and getting very close to Greer right off the bat. So if you see Greer, his feet are not planted right now at all. He did not have time to react and get his feet planted. Personally, you might say that's a flaw, but he had to sell to play action. He had to focus on selling to play action first, so I wouldn't really say that. Essentially, now he's going to have to make a tough off-balance throw, but he's going to try it anyways, and that ends up being the right decision because he makes a very good off-balance throw. Greer is actually a pretty good athlete, and he was able to make that throw, and they picked up a ton of yards, largely because of just Greer being able to make a tough off-balance throw. I mean, obviously, you know, the play itself was the real winner there, but Greer did his part on that one. Everyone always says, oh yeah, well how many of those yards just came from a screen pass? Well, hey, sometimes a screen pass is tough to do. Greer made a good off-balance throw, although if I'm being honest, maybe Greer's best highlights are when he's on balance. Like on this one, this one's going to be a great one. It's going to be a cover two zone, but it's actually an extra man in coverage, and that's going to be the route that really you'd want to throw to in this situation. Because it's a cover two zone with an extra man in coverage, meaning there's going to be a ton of Kansas players basically trying to make sure they don't get the first down right here. Personally, I'm not sure I love this play call from Kansas on a second down and five, especially with a good deep ball thrower like Greer, but that's what they're doing anyways, and Greer is going to make sure he takes advantage of it. Watch how he simply just takes his time, 
gets his feet planted and throws an absolute strike. And really, he threw that one on a line, too. He did not feel the need to lob it up, which is very important, because if he lobbed it up, then the safety could run over and potentially knock the ball away or even intercept it. Throwing that one on a line was huge. He had to do it or it wouldn't have been complete, but he knew the situation and he made a perfect throw. That's one of the things that made the West Virginia offense so good last year is having a quarterback like Greer who can throw the ball deep very well. Really in college especially, having a quarterback who can throw a good deep ball just opens up so many doors for you. His deep ball really is probably his best attribute, and here's another example of him showing it off. First things first, Tennessee is going to fake us that are going to be running cover two here, by the way, to have two safeties who are clearly back like that. But it's just a fake, they're not actually doing this, they're actually going to be running cover three instead. However, that's totally fine from West Virginia's perspective because they have two receivers running deep right over there. So the reason why this is perfect is because the Tennessee CD who's going to be back deep in the middle of the screen is going to have to make sure he can only cover one of them because you have to cover one guy. He can't be in two places at once, but this essentially means that whichever receiver is not getting double teamed, Greer could take a shot in that direction. At first, you would assume it would be the guy on the sideline, but actually that's not going to be the case. It's going to be the guy who's in the middle of the screen instead. So look at Greer here. First, he rolls out to the top half of the screen, which is what he's supposed to do on display. But now that he has basically all day to make a throw, look at how he just takes his time, gets his shoulder square, gets his feet planted, and gets ready to make a deep throw. And that's going to be exactly what he does. Now granted, this throw was a little bit behind, but again, that just has to be a catch. It could have been a little bit better, but honestly, being one yard apart from that far down the field, I mean, that's pretty much all you can ask for as a receiver. The receiver just has to make that catch. Some might consider that one a bad play, but I wouldn't. I would consider that a good play. However, there are some that I would consider a bad play, and this one will be one of those. What's going to happen here is really there's going to be three Tennessee players you're going to want to keep an eye on, and it's going to be those three right there. Two of which are playing man coverage, and one of which is in charge of taking away that middle of the screen. And this is actually perfect news for West Virginia, as they have routes designed to beat man coverage. Basically, what they're going to do is have the number one receiver right over there on the bottom half of the screen run right there, and then they'll have their tight end cut over to the bottom half of the screen and run in that direction. So it's simple. The number one receiver receiver could get open if he wins his one-on-one -on -one matchup, but really I would think that the tight end is the guy you'd want to take a look at here. And it's going to be even more so because of that Tennessee player right there. Look at how far behind he is away from the tight end. The tight end has plenty of room. This could be an easy catch. Meanwhile, he's also right next to West Virginia's receiver, so if he does try to throw it in that direction, it'd basically be double coverage. Except it wouldn't even be double coverage, it would be a triple coverage, because there's also another Tennessee Titan player who's in charge of covering the end zone, and he's going to run over to try to help out in that direction. But of course, as I mentioned, this is not a good play, this is a bad play, and as you can tell by the way this is going, Greer is going to try to throw it there. But not just that, it was actually almost complete. He had a window there, but he threw it too low. Again, going back to what I'm talking about a little bit, he just could use a little bit better of a touch on those throws. If he threw it maybe a foot higher, that's probably a touchdown. I mean, his receiver that he was trying to get the ball to did get his hands on it, however, the Tennessee players were also able to basically knock his hands out of the way. So some people might be saying, well, yeah, okay, he didn't make that throw, but it was a tight window, and that was an okay read, because he did have a window to begin with. Yes, there was a receiver who turned out to be even more open, but isn't that just going to happen sometimes? You see a receiver who you think is pretty open, but turns out there's another receiver who's wide open? And in some instances, that would be fair. Like, for example, if there was another West Virginia player wide open on the top half of the screen, I wouldn't really be hating on him too much. But the reality is, his first read should have been the tight end breaking to the bottom half of the screen. He should have saw this was man coverage earlier and realized already what he wanted to do. He shouldn't have had to move on to his second read quickly because his second read was what he actually threw to. Granted, it was still almost a touchdown, but he made things unnecessarily difficult on himself, and if he didn't, it probably would have been a touchdown. So okay, you know what, he made a mistake, but let's see what he can do, let's see how we can bounce back off this next play. It's going to once again be man coverage, and what Tennessee is going to do this time is they're going to be double teaming each of those two West Virginia players who are on the inside. Also, another Tennessee player to keep an eye on is going to be that one right there in the middle of the screen, as he is in charge of covering the halfback. However, if the halfback is blocking instead of running a route, then he will drop back into coverage. So basically, the worst thing you can do here is be thinking middle of the screen. You kind of have to be thinking corner of the end zone here, if anywhere at all. And that's unfortunate for West Virginia, because the guy that Greer is going to want to throw to will be that receiver right there, who is cutting to the middle of the screen. So that means that Greer's first read isn't going to work out too well, and it's kind of a bad situation. But it's not going to be an awful situation, because the halfback who started off this play blocking ends up running out to the top half of the screen, and now it's pretty open. The Tennessee player saw that he was blocking, so he dropped back in the coverage, and now he's pretty out of position trying to make sure that he's covering that halfback. Worth mentioning, the chances of this being a first down or a touchdown are relatively slim. Really, the halfback would probably have to break a tackle if he wanted to get in. But it's definitely a chance, and it's also a pretty safe play. It's not going to be an interception. However, Greer is going to turn it down and see if he can bide some more time and try to find something better, and that's going to be a terrible decision. It falls incomplete, but that could have easily been intercepted. When you're in the red zone like that, you shouldn't be just throwing up jump balls and hoping that they work. You really 
really shouldn't. One of the things that Guerrero does have that some quarterbacks in this draft did not have is arm strength. That's probably his best attribute, I would say, is arm talent. It's definitely something that will only get you so far alone. However, it's also something you definitely need if you are going to be a successful NFL quarterback. His arm strength definitely is a key part of what makes him very good, and it's not just on deep throws. I mean, on some of these shallower throws, it can be beneficial as well. Like on this one, it's going to be a cover two zone. They do have a receiver running basically in between those two zones right over there, in between the zone that's closest to the bottom of the screen and second closest to the bottom of the screen. But since it's going to be basically in the middle of those two zones, but just in between them, this now means that their window won't be open for very long. Eventually, a Tennessee player will clog up that gap, so Greer will only have a short period of time to try to make this throw. So for one thing, look at Greer. Greer is already making this throw just as his assigned man is turning his shoulders. He's wasting no time. He knows where he wants to make this throw, and since he has a receiver open, that's who he's going to try to hit. But not just that, look at the actual throw itself. Just a great throw. Again, worth mentioning, a little bit low, but that's total nitpick. I mean, that was just a very good throw, a very fast throw, and also, while it was fast, it wasn't like so fast that the receiver would have a hard time catching it. Because that's another thing too, I remember Josh Freeman was famous for having a bunch of receivers always drop passes because he would throw them as hard as he could even though they were two feet away from each other. I mean, you gotta throw it like you mean it, but at the same time, the guy has to make the catch, and that's exactly what happened with Airbag Greer. And because of his arm talent, when he makes correct reads, he can be an incredibly effective player. Like on this one, it's gonna be a cover one hole, and those are gonna be two routes that West Virginia's receivers on the top half of the screen will be running, and so that route in particular will be the one that Greer wants to throw to. It's gonna be one-on-one -on -one coverage, so if his receiver can win his matchup, then he could potentially pick up a ton of yards. So that's gonna be the first place Greer looks, and if you actually take a look right now, that doesn't appear to be open, right? I mean, the defensive back has a good two yards on him, so you wouldn't really think you wanna throw it in this direction, but actually it's an okay throw to make. Largely because of look at the defensive back, he's gonna have to turn his body on this one. He's gonna have to turn his numbers to where Greer is. So because of this, the receiver will be able to look back while it'll be more difficult for the defensive back to turn his shoulders and then make sure he can make a play. So he's gonna give his receiver a chance, and at first glance, it might just look like the receiver made a great catch for a touchdown, and in fairness, he did. But Greer put him in position to make a play by realizing that he had the advantage on a play like that. So while yes, he won his one-on-one -on -one matchup, Greer saw that he won his one matchup and then took advantage of that. Essentially, anytime a defensive back isn't turned to you, that's when you wanna make the throw. It's tough to knock the ball away when you can't see where the ball is, so if you see that a defensive back is turned and your receiver isn't, that's a great place to make the throw. Watch, here almost the exact same thing will happen. It's actually almost the exact same situation. This time it's going to be a cover one blitz instead of a cover one hole, but other than that, pretty, pretty similar situation. As you see, those are the routes, so once again, pretty similar. It is going to be just one-on-one -on -one coverage on the top left-hand corner of the screen. And Greer once again sees that defensive back's back is turned, throws it in that direction, and the receiver is able to make a great catch. So again, at first glance, it looks like receivers are kind of bailing him out here, but that's not the case at all. He might not necessarily be quote-unquote open in the sense that there is nobody around him, but he's open in the sense that he has a much bigger advantage by being able to look back, see where the ball is, whereas a defensive back has to make sure he's keeping pace with his assigned man. Greer was great at noticing that in West Virginia and then being able to take advantage of those plays. Greer, like most players, has some pros and has some cons, but I absolutely do not hate this pick at all from Carolina. I'm actually a little bit surprised he fell that far, because I actually do think that if he could put all his pieces together, he could be a quality starting quarterback in the NFL. Now, will he be able to do that? I just don't know. It's a risk, and that's why he's not a first round pick, and I totally understand that. Who knows, today might be the last day I ever mention his name, but I do like the pick from Carolina.